in the shear force and bending moment diagram we will going to study the effect of external loads such as axial force, shear force and the bending moment at any section of the beam their sign convention then in that case we will develop the differential equation relation between the load intensity, shear force and bending moment that is W, V and M and finally we will find out the shear how to construct the shear force and bending moment diagram so before we start this first of all let the beam itself basically beam in general is a very long compared to the cross sectional dimensions they are not very short, they are very long. Usually, you, we have two supports. One support is fixed and one support is roller support. They may carry very, various types of loads. This one is a point load. It may carry UDL also, moment, eccentric load, all these type of load. Now, to classify the types of beam, basically that entirely depends that where we have a support. So we require normally two support, one is called as fixed support and one is called as roller support. For fixed support we have normally we have two reactions and for roller support we have one reaction. If we keep the two supports at the end, that is this support on the left hand side and this support on the right hand side, it is called as simply supported beam. If one of the support is placed inside, one part is overhang, this one is called as overhanging beam. And if the other support is also placed on the left hand side, we have double overhang beam. If we remove these two supports and we have one fixed support, so this type of beam is called as cantilever beam. If you have a cantilever and deflection is very large, then normally we support a roller support here. So this type of beam is called as prop beam. So this will be introduced you after the deflection chapter is over. When the right hand support is removed and another fixed support is used, then in that case it is called as fix fix type of beam. To develop the relation between the shear force, bending moment and the load diagram, let us consider here one beam and let we have a loading like this. So this is any type of loading which is a function of x is continuously variable from left end to right end and let us say this load is acting in a downward direction. So this is generalized type of loading, it may cover point load or it may cover UDL or UVL also, x axis on the towards right and this one is our load axis that is W axis. So our load is a function of x and we can write this function in the general form as k into x to the power n. By varying the value of k and n we can have different load conditions here. If we take k equals to 100 Newton, in that case we will assign the value of n equal to 0 and k is equal to 100. So in that case we will get UDL value. Here n is called as degree. If you want a UVL then you assign the value of n equal to 1, k equal to something. So your load will vary in the linear form. So all the functions are usually expressed in the form of k into x to the power n. So let's say we have two reactions. To find a reaction we must know what is the load, total load acting on the beam. To find a total load on the beam we will consider one section here. Let us consider one small section here of a constant height. Let the height of this rectangle is equal to w and from the support at distance equals to x. So this one is x, thickness is dx and the height of the load is w. So if I enlarge this figure, I will get some figure like this. So the same enlargement of the given elemental area. This distance will be equals to dx, height will be equals to w. So total load acting on this one will be w multiplied by dx. Remember w is a function of x, so this rectangle has a continuous height. Uh, variable height as x will change. So area of this figure represents the total load acting and will pass to the centroid of this element. So total load is simply integral of wx into dx over the whole distance from 0 to L. So actually x is equal to 0 on the left hand side and x equal to L on the right hand side. That is the entire span. So just put the value and you can get the total load. To solve this we must know the function first. Function can be in any form. If you want to find out the centroid, use the definition of centroid that is the integral 0 to L wx into x into dx upon total load acting. So you can find out centroid of the load also by basic integration method. So once we develop the basic idea of this one, we first now develop the relation between the load, shear force and bending moment. Load is represented by w which is a function of x, shear force will represent by letter v and bending moment by m. So we will continue our element that we had previously selected. 
let's call this one is delta x now slightly larger element is same as dx so let's consider the thickness is delta x height is w so total load will pass through the center of this load because we have considered some thickness of the section that is delta x so this total load will be equals to w multiplied by delta x is w function of x multiplied by delta x at a distance of delta x by 2 from both the edges let's consider v is the shear force acting on the left hand side so we have another shear force acting on this side this may be equal or different than the original value so if we consider three elements so we have a shear force acting in the so this one will be the shear force acting in downward direction this will be upward it's action so we have reaction so again we have action and then we have reaction so this is continuous phenomena in all the elements out of this we have selected one so this value we assign as v and this value we assign as v plus delta v delta v is equal to zero then both value of shear force are equal if delta v is positive then the right side shear force is more and otherwise but the shear force will remain same or variable that entirely depends upon the load in w let's consider there is a one moment taking place on the right hand side as m to oppose this we have we will show another uh, another bending moment that is m plus delta m now again we are not sure about the delta m it can be positive or zero so we have one shear force one bending moment on the right left hand side and m plus delta m and v plus delta v are the shear force and the bending moment on the right hand side so we'll take two balance one balance is of sigma fi and one balance is of moment so let's apply the first equation that is sigma fi equal to zero and vertically upward we'll take it positive for the given element so this force v is positive force so we have v wx into delta x is a negative force acting downward is minus wx into delta x we will only write w because it assumes that w is a function of x and this force is negative force that is minus of v plus dv so these are the only three forces involved in the element so their sum must equal to zero so if you expand the bracket your first term will get cancer and you left with minus w into delta x equal to minus of delta v is equal to zero or we can write delta v is equals to minus of w into delta x so in differential form we will write this as dv is equals to minus w into minus dx so finally we get dv by dx equals to minus w so remember this equation this is a very useful equation we can take lot of information from this equation it entirely depends upon your knowledge of maths later on we will discuss this now we will take the balance about the balance of moment and we will take the clockwise moment equal to positive so we have to take the moment o so i will take the point o somewhere on the right edge anywhere you can take it so one by one we'll find out the moment first is this edge and this is also right edge m is a clockwise is taken as positive v multiplied by delta x is positive quantity wx into delta x is acting in a downward direction so about o it will rotate anti clockwise at a distance equal to delta x by 2 so that is a negative quantity total load is wx or w into delta x that is the load acting at distance equals to delta x by 2 the force will pass to the point o so will not develop any moment and m plus dm we are shown anti clockwise so this is taken as negative quantity so we get minus of m in bracket plus delta m the whole sum must equal to zero so again if we expand this your first term will be get cancelled so this m and this m is cancelled let expand this this is v into delta x 1 by 2 into w into delta x whole square remember delta x is very very small value so delta x square can be neglected in regular calculation and we get minus delta m equal to 0 since the delta x is very small quantity so the square of that quantity is very very small value so that term is neglected so what is left is v into delta x equal to delta m in differential form we will write this as dm by dx equals to v so remember these two equation if you understand this equation then you can very easily draw the sfd bmd these two are the master equations from these two only so this is equation one and equation two now we'll discuss these two equations in detail